Hey guys, I'm Nate, I'm the new Hacksmith, and today on Make It Real, we're gonna be showing you how to heat treat steel to add a permanent edge to your knives. I said this was a temp position. Oh. Uh, uh. Guys, of course I'm not taking over, but Callie and I are here in Canada, and we decided to stop by the Hacksmith here at Hacksmith Industries, we've got a fun project to do. Yeah, today we're gonna be heat treating steel to show you how to give a solid edge to your knives or any kind of weapons you wanna make, like we make on the Hacksmith channel. So to do some tests on the steel, we thought James would probably have some really good equipment and maybe some stylized weapons that we could really use as a stress test. This is the best day of my life. <laughs> Here's the basic idea. We're going to show how to heat treat and temper some high carbon steel and then show some side-by-side -side comparisons of what happens if you hit each one with Thor's hammer. <sighs> I may not be worthy. This is why I don't actually get to take over the channel. Is can't, I just can't. So we ordered some steel delivered to your shop. Did you get that? There's special steel that we want to use for this video. Yeah, I believe it was a 1084. 1084 knife, knife making, steel. yeah. Yeah, uh, we put it in this box right here. So Callie, you can, can go ahead and open it up and, and get started on this experiment. It says do not open. Do open. Okay. Oh, uh, do, do, oh, do, do open. Do. You gotta read between the lines. That seemed too easy given the way that uh... Do I want to know what's about to happen to me? Oh, you're fine. I can't if this that. is a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> so where's our steel, James? Uh, over there. <laughs> I'm going back to America. <laughs> All right. Well, our steel was not actually in Pandora's box. So this, this looks kind of like the steel that you would get at Home Depot or Lowe's, any hardware type store, but it's not the highest quality steel, which for a lot of things doesn't matter. It works so well for so many things. This specifically is a type of high carbon steel. And as you were saying, it's 1084 steel. This is usually used as a knife making steel. So the 84 stands for 0.84% carbon, which is how much carbon is actually in the steel. And what that means is we can actually heat treat this to make it even harder than it is right now. And we'll show you how hard it is by actually doing a few destructive tests before and after we heat treat it. Okay, so James, destructive test. This is my favorite thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> so I think we should at least try a file on one. Let's try and see if we can bend one. What weapons do you have that we could use against these? I think the bending one, Mjolnir. We actually use Mjolnir as a variable <laughs> swing press for forming sheet metal. The way that this steel arrives when you order it, this is in what's called an annealed state. It has had a heat treatment, but that heat treatment is basically what weakens it the most. It just brings it to a relatively soft stage. Obviously, it's still hard. It's still a bar of steel. It's not like putty clay or glass or anything like that, but it's not as hard as we want it to be if we're actually gonna use it as a tool. So that's that's the whole point, is to see what we can do to this to change it, and we need a baseline. Yep. So Callie was saying we'll use a file. You were saying we can use Mjolnir to try and bend or maybe even shatter it, and let's, test it out before we heat treat it, and heat treat it and test it again after. All right, so we've got our control steel, which is as we bought it from the steel company. So it's basically just annealed right now. Then we're going to heat up these pieces, so it'll be heat treated, and we'll be quenching those. And then the tempered ones, we exact same as the heat treat, but after we've quenched them, we're actually gonna reheat them in the oven to temper them to make it as strong as possible. All right, so let's start by actually heat treating these pieces of steel. So we've got our our control steel, which we're gonna leave over here, and then we're actually gonna be doing the same heat treating process to all four of these, and we've got a kiln here. Now the kiln is actually, it's pretty power hungry, so we've got an arc reactor here. Boom! And you want it 825? Yeah. We set to 809 at the moment. Different types of steel are gonna have different temperatures that you need to get them up to. What we're using this 1084 steel, one of the reasons we're using it is it's actually probably the most forgiving type of high carbon steel there is. It's one of the easiest to get a good heat treatment on. There are some types where you need very precise temperatures for a really precise amount of time and then to cool it down in exactly the right material for the exact right amount of time. The heat we're gonna be using for our steel is at 815 Celsius, which is about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's see how many we can fit in at one time. Yeah. 
Once this is all heated up and our steel is nice and orange hot, the next step is going to be quenching it in oil. Would cooking oil work? Actually, yes. For some types of steel, you have to be pretty particular about what you quench it in. But again, this 1084, usually quite forgiving. So we are going to use vegetable oil. However, to make it work a little bit better, it needs to be a little bit thinner. And to do that, we're going to heat it up to about 55 degrees Celsius or around 130 Fahrenheit. It's not there. What's your plan? Uh, you guys want to put your safety glasses on? Yes. Ah. <laughs> Is this not how most people heat up their cooking oil? That's how I could break. This is how I could. Yeah, this is, this is normal. All right, let's see if that's hot enough. I think we're good. So we're now at a temperature like I can stick my finger in and after a few seconds it starts to get a little bit painful like, oh, that's, that's hotter yeah. than I want, which is kind of what we're going for. About 110 Fahrenheit is sort of the upper limit of what you can leave your hand in without it starting to burn. And so the fact that it is getting too hot is a good sign. Our kiln has reached 815. Well, it's actually gotten up to 822 right in the range we're looking for. So at this point, the steel and the carbon have begun to change how they're interacting. And at this temperature, the steel has begun to form a crystalline structure called austenite. That's a phase of the steel where it's just the carbon is not actually interacting much with the iron inside. And as a result of being heated up and forming that austenite, it should have actually lost its magnetism, which is a good way for us to test if the steel is actually as hot as we want it. James, what have you got there? I've got a magnet, and as you can tell, the steel is very magnetic. But, hypothetically, the red hot steel in there should not be very magnetic anymore. Yep. Well, not really magnetic. <laughs> Let's go over the first one. So Callie's going to open the kiln. I'm going to grab one of these, pull it out, and put it right into the oil and gently swirl it around. I probably don't actually need to be gentle with this stuff because it's quite thick. I don't think we have to worry about these just straight steel bars. The first few seconds are where it really changes temperature the most, and that should be where it changes state from austenite to martensite. I mean, it might pull it right out of my pliers. <laughs> yeah, it's back to magnetic. <laughs> uh, yeah. And now it's there forever. Uh, it's back to very magnetic. All right, so putting the hot steel into the oil probably raised the overall temperature of the oil a bit, but we're gonna add just a little bit of cool oil to uh, drop the temperature back down again. All right, last one. All right, so we've quenched the first three using oil, but I'd like to use a technique that we use with some of our projects, oh, yeah. and that's quenching with styrofoam. And Callie, I just want you to drop the piece of steel right there. I've never been happy about something. Yep, let's do this. Oh, there's your fire. <laughs> and that head is gone. All right, so because a lot of the steel actually flaked off from uh, the heating, we actually lost our scribe mark. So I'm just gonna write down uh, which ones are which again. And we're gonna go ahead and continue the tempering process. All right, let's take these to the kitchen. That's the kitchen, huh? Good kitchen. Ta -da! <laughs> what a kitchen. A I love it. complete kitchen. Oh, and you, oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we, kind of, you know, we, we store gas gasoline in, in your oven. We heat put it in, heat it up in the oven, yep. So we'll just set it at 425, let it heat up in the oven. We're gonna let that run for two hours, turn the oven off, and let it cool down in the oven as well. All right, so we've gone ahead and let our metal heat for two hours, and then we let it just cool down. It's time to take it out and see what's happened. So we've got our plain annealed steel, and then we have our heat-treated steel, and then we have our heat-treated and tempered steel. So now, all we have to do is test it out. Let's see the difference between them all. <laughs> this particular version of Mjolnir weighs how much? 73 pounds. <laughs> it bent. Yeah, a nice little bend there. So this is the untreated. This is just the steel as it arrives to us. All right, I'm gonna put some safety glasses on this time. This has been heat treated, but not tempered. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> That's how you use a variable swing press. <laughs> that was beautiful. It didn't even it try just, to survive that. Just 
snapped what? right off. Look at that difference between no. plain steel, which bent a little bit, and hardened treated. steel. This is sort of a universal law of solid materials. The harder something gets, the less flexible it is. And we've made this quite a bit harder, and so it's a lot less flexible. All right, Kelly, you wanna smash one right here? I do, I really do. I am worthy. Yes. <laughs> Shoot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Now, if everything has gone just right with our ah. tempering, this piece should not crack the same way. Ideally, it will sort of spring. It will actually like take some impact and bounce back. So it won't bend and it won't break. With the other one, I was able to shatter it. There should be, technically, if we did this right, no way that even with Mjolnir, I shouldn't be able to break this. Got a lot of, a lot of faith in our uh, tempered steel. Uh, no, I don't. I actually... Okay, ready? <laughs> it's like a spring. That flexed a lot. And then just, nope, right back. So our three types of steel, what would we get if we made knives out of each of these? Well, for the first one, what you're gonna get is you're gonna be able to file it down, it's gonna look pretty, and then you're gonna try and use it, and it's going to dent and be useless. So you don't keep an edge on this at all. Second one, the heat treatment. What would we get with a knife out of this? Now with that, you would be able to get a really sharp edge, but if you encountered any other stronger materials, you're gonna chip it, you're gonna dent it, not, not dent, sorry, it's, it's gonna chip. Yeah. <laughs> and it's gonna make a useless knife because then you got a burr and then it won't cut nice anymore. Then we've got our tempered bar of steel and this is what we want. So we would shape it without doing any heat treating and then you heat treat it and temper it and if you make a knife out of that, you get something useful, you get something that's much harder, but also isn't so brittle. We saw how well that sprung back after we hit it with the hammer compared to the annealed steel, which just <laughs> bent, stayed that way. If you do hit something hard with the blade, you'd be able to straighten it back out. You'd be able to hone it, sharpen it. It's gonna do what you want it to do. And if you even wanna get a little rougher with it, maybe do a little bit of prying, which isn't what knives are usually for, but these things come up, it's got some flex to it. It's not just gonna snap off the first time you try something like that, or even if you just drop it on the ground if you're unlucky. That's the difference. We can see what happens to the steel with the heat treating and why we want to do that. You've probably seen some of the cool stuff in the background or us interacting with it. He's almost certainly got a video or two or more on his channel showing how he made those things. They are super cool. You've gotta go check them out. Links down in the description, not something you wanna miss. As you guys know, we've got lots more content for you. All you have to do is hit that button. Bu hit that box at the top, you'll go directly to our last video. You wanna check that out. The other box is gonna show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you hit this bomb here in the middle, you'll be subscribed to the channel. That way you're never gonna miss out on a cool video. Don't forget to hit that bell and we'll see you in the next one. Talk subscribe to you then. Subscribe to the Axmas.